Hello, my name is Samantha Martin and I'm the project director for Project Take Charge at the Prevention Research Center at Morehouse School of Medicine. This project is an HIV and substance use prevention intervention designed to be implemented with students aged 18 to 24 on the campuses of HBCUs and minority serving institutions as well as their surrounding communities. Project Take Charge aims to strengthen or develop community partnerships in order to support HIV testing, condom distribution, and HIV and substance use prevention education. In this iteration of the project, we've been collecting data on the implementation process to inform the development of this project as well as future interventions. We conducted key informant interviews with faculty, staff, and administrators as well as focus groups with current students on four college campuses. Um, we discussed existing community partnerships, the need for collaboration with community partners, current policies and practices, and any barriers and facilitators for program implementation. We also conducted a community assessment in order to identify any local organizations that could help provide HIV and substance use prevention near the campus. We found that all four of the schools demonstrated a need to strengthen community partnerships. There were either very few or no sustained community partnerships, despite the community assessment revealing several local community-based organizations that could support the interventions. Key informants also discussed challenges with the few existing partnerships that they did have. For example, prior attempts at HIV testing, treatment, and education were successful in the short term, but were not sustained or consistent on campus. Um, key informants viewed these um, activities as isolated events that were not part of established or consistent community partnerships. Um, while one school um, established a memorandum of understanding with community partners, um, these MOUs were not necessarily enforced. Additionally, none of the participating schools have substance use educational programs, interventions, or partnerships. We also reviewed their current policies and practices regarding HIV intervention and substance use intervention. Um, routine HIV testing was offered at some institutions through their student health services. This could vary from one to two times a week to a couple of times um, a semester, or through occasional testing events that happened on things like World AIDS Day and other um, special campus activities. HIV positive students are typically referred out to community partners for testing and counseling. As far as substance use, all the campuses reported being dry campuses and having zero tolerance for substance use on campus, um, and most of their substance use policies are limited to just enforcing these dry campus policies. Additionally, all schools provided condoms to students in some capacity. The most common barrier to implementation was a limited capacity to conduct HIV and substance use activities. This came in the form of limited personnel to conduct testing, educational activities, HIV treatment and counseling, as well as a limited budget for supplies and additional personnel in order to conduct intervention activities. As a result, HIV prevention, treatment, and substance use education has not occurred as often as needed or desired by the student body. We can see here that the key informants discussed how they rely heavily on these outside sources to provide the personnel and donations necessary, um, as well as the desire to strengthen these community partnerships so that they can sufficiently provide the resources that students need on campus. In addition to these barriers, we also discussed facilitators for successful program implementation. What we found is that community partnerships have been crucial in previous HIV prevention interventions at all of the four campuses in the form of HIV testing kits, partnering for HIV testing and educational events, referrals for HIV treatment and counseling, as well as training for peer health educators, and even condom donations. Um, and so the key informants all um, express support for HIV and substance use intervention through continued community partnerships that make it possible for any of these interventions to happen. Students have also been receptive to community partners that have supported previous interventions. And so community partnership remains increasingly important to making sure that students get the health support that they need on campus. This project has demonstrated how intervention strategies at HBCUs and MSIs must address the capacity that institutions have to implement the programming. The implementation of HIV AIDS interventions on college campuses may require some increased capacity building that can be supported through community partnerships. Community partnerships have been successful in the short term, but we've learned that some additional effort is required to strengthen these relationships and sustain long-term interventions. And so hopefully this work may inform some future implementation of other prevention and education efforts at HBCUs and minority-serving institutions. Thank you so much for your time.